Live from FedEx Forum, this is The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. It is the yeah. odds couple. It is chapter five, week six. Chapter five, week six here of the odds couple. Glad you are with us. We got a lot to get into today. A lot of football uh, for the weekend. It got started last night. We got the uh, we got the forty nine straight days of football uh, that got underway last mm -hmm. night, which is pretty exciting. Maction gets underway next week, and uh, we got some college football, NFL tonight, and uh, and then of course throughout the weekend. And we will talk all about it here on the program. Uh, no Lang Whitaker today. Uh, he is out. He is on vacation. Uh, but he did send his picks along the way. We'll have a picks later in the show. Uh, but John yeah. Roser is here. here. Hello, John Roser. Hey, what's up, Rob? Not, man. Not much, man. Yeah. You, you're kind of, uh, you've been doing the, the marathon here today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hosting duties the last couple of days. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But you're I mean, ready for football picks. Yeah, always. Always ready for football picks. Always ready. Um, it's not a pat slate. But there are good games here. We got good games yeah. this week. We yeah, do. we have interesting games. This I week. think so, and we'll uh, we'll dive into a lot of them. Uh, also, CJ Hurt is in the building. Hello, CJ. Hello. How are you, sir? I'm good. Let's get this rolling. Let's baby. get it going. Let's get it going. Let's uh, get it rolling like Limp Biscuit. Just like Limp Biscuit. Is it biscuit? Yeah, biscuit. biscuit right? B i z k i t. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, last week I, uh, I I won the picks again. Uh, that's two weeks in a row. Two I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Uh, but just three and two. Still not good enough. Tied with Roser uh, at three and two last week. Yeah, I um. I want to uh, officially kick the USC kicker out of school. Yeah. Um, oh. He missed an they, – they, they hit 48 points, right? I have over 48 and a half. Right. He missed an extra point and a field goal. <laughs> like, if you just make the extra point, it hits. But like, you I have become Johnny Teaser. Yeah, I have. I've, I've, I've done pretty good on the teasers. Just knocking them down. Knocking them down left and right. Very good, very left good. Left and right. I don't uh, think I have one this week. I don't think I did a teaser. I did not do a teaser this week. I should have. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I noticed. Uh, CJ, uh, what did you uh, – what did we learn uh, this week? Um, do you want NFL or college? I learned two things in in different footballs. Whichever one you want to start with first. College. College. It's still stupid. <laughs> it's still stupid. It's the same shit different year. It's so damn stupid. I don't know what to make of these teams. You got to use all these various analytics and eye test when the best thing that these teams could do is play one another. Play. Play. Michigan is ranked number two in the nation right now. The season ended, they'd be in the playoff in part because uh, over 50%, I think 57% of their time playing football, they've had a 14 point lead or more. That's incredible. Stop it. They're over. That's almost 60% of the time they got a 14 point lead. You dig halfway deeper, and you're like, oh, holy shit. They're beating the hell out of, like, UNLV. Right. They're not playing anybody worth the damn. They did it again this week. I think the same can be said for while Georgia played a conference game. I think the out-of-conference slate leaves something to be desired. I think Alabama, although they did play Texas, leaves something to be desired. Like, these teams, the, the thing I'm looking forward to the most about everybody joining one or two conferences is at least now you'll play and you'll stop giving me the matchups against overmatched Toledo and Southeast Missouri State. Good grief. Also, uh, Washington let me down. I thought Washington was going to go out there and demolish them, and they just absolutely just laid in it. Yeah. yeah, they did. Roser? They did. What'd you um, learn? Um, uh, hmm. What do you think games happen Oh, I mean, it's nothing. I didn't. I don't think I learned anything really that I didn't already know. Oh, the Miami Dolphins are the USC of the NFL. Yeah. Or the Lincoln Riley coach team of the NFL. Um, <laughs> maybe it changes when Jalen Ramsey gets back, but like, 
you gave up 48 to the Bills. Okay. Um, you beat – you split 70 on the Broncos who didn't – who quit. Like, they quit in the first half. Like, they just quit. And they suck. And they suck. And they quit. Um and you beat the Patriots. They did not kill the Patriots. It was a Sunday night game. They did not kill the Patriots. They scored like 24 points against the Patriots. They did not destroy the Patriots. And then the first week, they beat the Chargers, like 37 to 34. So, of your of your wins right there, like, you basically, you have to outscore team. Your defense is not, what we've seen is when you play the better teams, the talented teams, Buffalo and the Chargers, who knows how good the Chargers are, but we know they got talent. If you were just playing Madden, you would think the Chargers are like the best team in the world, but they're not. Um, They have to score points when they play the better teams. They they clearly, I mean, between the Chargers and the Bills, like they don't get enough stops, so they're going to have to outscore you in those games, which is not going to be good enough to win you a Super Bowl. They're going to have, you have to be able to win games. I love Patrick Mahomes said this. When he talked about, uh, I think it was after the Jets game or maybe after another one of those games, he said, if you're going to win Super Bowls, I know it's not flashy, but you do have to be able to win games like this. You have to be able to win the ugly games yeah. when they get in the mud. And, and you're going to have ugly and games. And the Dolphins have shown no ability to do that. Lincoln Riley's team, it, 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 we knew it at Oklahoma. We're seeing it at USC. They do not defend well enough. To or win or that, just to win a national get one stop. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes has been on both sides of that yeah. where I just need one stop. I'm a score because they can't stop me. I need one stop. And that's not the case this and, year with that Kansas City offense. Well, I'm, I'm, like they're not. Yeah, they're not that way this year, but I'm thinking about the Dolphins. Yeah. Right. Think about how high powered that Chiefs offense was going up against Brady and the Patriots. Yeah. Couldn't get a stop. Well, Brady think of the greatest won. show on turf. Uh, uh, no, how they won team. a Super Bowl was a defensive stop. One stop. Yeah. One, you just one need stop. one. And one. the Dolphins got it in week one against the Chargers. They got the one stop, the last possession of the game. They got the stop. They got like two sacks on that possession. They got the stop. Yeah. But. I also think when it comes to playing the better teams that aren't the Chargers, when you talk about playing Kansas City, when you talk about playing Buffalo, if you play Philly or San Francisco or Dallas, like you better be able to get more than just the one. Yeah. Uh, A couple of things I learned this week. The worst team in football is the Chicago Bears. The worst team in football. Now, the good news for the Chicago Bears, though, is, uh, you know, in, in such a bleak season, in a season in which they may not win a game, uh, and we'll get to see them tonight in prime time, which is invigorating. Uh, the good news is they'll have a new coach and a new quarterback next season. It's over. Both of them are done. It's over. Yeah. It's over. Justin, Justin, Justin Fields, I understand the offensive line's terrible. Okay? I understand he's under duress a lot. But he hasn't done anything other than a couple of times in a game. He'll have a nice run. Other than that, he hasn't shown anything that you think, there are some nice flashes of showing me that he could be a quarterback. Yeah. He's um, not. I don't think he is as bad as he's shown this year, but the numbers are the numbers, and the record is the record. And I don't think this is all having a horrible offensive line either. There are too many times when you see, you watch Justin Fields highlights. Like, dude, he just holds the ball. He holds the ball. And it's like, you can't tell me that somebody did not get open somewhere. And the, there, are, there are video clips you can go see when they pan away. And they're like, and they say, this ended in a sack. Or this ended in an interception. And it's like, one, two, three guys. They're open, but he doesn't see it. No. He does not see that. Um, and when he does toss it, he doesn't have good touch either. Yeah, I'm always <laughs> weary of guys who played for uh, Lincoln Riley or Ryan Day, how they'll do at the pro level. Very or just, weary of that. Just Ohio State in general, another one of those quarterbacks from Ohio State that just looked great in college and then did not pan out in the NFL. I will say lost in the a couple of weeks ago that uh, much much ado about nothing in the uh, Justin Fields, what's going on? He was like, well, coaches are giving me too much information. That that whole clip that went viral, if you yeah. listen to the whole clip, he's just providing, he provides more context. And in that clip, he says, you know, that's their job is to give me all the information. I've got to do a better job of processing what they're giving me. And he just does not look like he can process fast enough to be at this level, which is pretty damn funny when you think after his first preseason game, which was pretty impressive. It's like, yeah, the NFL is slow to me. It's slow. 
And now look at him. Now look but at now him. It's, it's, regular season it's, it's real fast. It's been real right. fast the past three yeah. regular seasons, hasn't it, Mr. Fields? And that's that's a tough thing about these younger quarterbacks. It is, all right, you're athletic enough. You've got the arm talent. You're pretty smart. But can you do it fast? Because we need you to get that ball out of your hand quickly. Tua Tagovailoa, yeah. the way he gets rid of the ball, we need you, Justin Herbert, just boom. You got 1.9, 2.2 seconds. Make a decision and get it out of your hands. Can you do that and make the right decisions consistently? And it doesn't look like Justin Fields is able to do that. Offensive line is atrocious, does not help anything, and makes matters worse for him. And it's it sucks because I think he is a, a top 32 quarterback in the NFL. I really do. But I feel like after this year, once they – if they move on from him, Rob, I'm not sure if they do. But if they decide to move on from him, I'm not sure he gets another crack to be to be a starter. I He's going to be and somebody who's going to be a backup. their pick and Carolina's think, first pick? I, yeah, the, the Bears may have the top two picks in the NFL draft. I think the only way after this year that he might be able to start – I mean, he will start after this season at some point. Like he will – is if, you know, I think he will get signed on to be somebody's backup. I don't think he will get signed on to be a starter. If the Bears choose to, if they end up with the top two picks and they, you know, got another quarterback, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Cam Ward, Michael Penix, whoever in their sights, um, he will start again for another team, but he will be the backup. I don't, I don't think, yeah, start. he won't be a full-time starter. No, they, 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 no, no backup, team is going to sign him yeah. saying, you're our starting yeah. quarterback no. heading into next season. No. It would be, you're the backup. If something happens to the starter, then you will step in. One thing uh, I also learned in, in the college game, it took me about 45 minutes before I realized that Cincinnati-BYU is a Big 12 conference game. <laughs> you you're in the Big Twelve? Yeah, how about that? I had no idea. Yeah, it took me it took me it took me a good forty five minutes watching that game before I realized. Wait a second, this is a Big Twelve conference game, Cincinnati BYU. Oh, I right. take that back. I did learn something. Oh, all right. Well, I didn't really learn it, but um, I think UCF. And oh my God. Houston definitely learned it. Houston. You've played two Big 12 games. You have played Texas Tech and I think it was West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe it was TCU. I think it was TCU and Texas Tech. You're 0-2. Those are just middle-of-the-pack Big 12 teams. Like Those are not like top of the line. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll see when Texas and Oklahoma go to the SEC, but like... I mean, you got outscored. You gave up forty-two and a half points per game, and you got out, and you got beat by like an average of three touchdowns. So, you know, I had I UCF last week. Better. What were they? They were an eleven-point favorite over Baylor, and they're up thirty-five to ten going into the fourth. That's a bad beat. And and not only lost the beat, they lost the game. Yeah, got outscored twenty-six nothing in the fourth. <laughs> That, that one tough. was hard. That one was hard to take. Although I did get it back with Jacksonville State last night. Yeah. Big second half comeback for Rich Rod's team Bro, last Rich night. Bro, Rich Rod's big. team's been a covering machine this year. And it's been all and in, at, at halftime they've been down big in every game where they've only scored seven points in the first half, and, and then seven they, in the second game, and then I think it was seven last night, and then come back and they're amazing it's in the Rich second Rod, half. Halftime adjustments. Rich Rod's halftime, halftime adjustments. adjustments. Absolutely. Everybody um, but before we, but I, I don't want to leave this part of the conversation feeling good about Rich Rod. He ran Michigan into the ground. He did a horrible <laughs> job at Ole Miss. He should not get an FBS Power 5 coaching job again. But there, there. flat out, say it. Rich Rod okay, slander. because we are going to allow Rich Rod to Jacksonville State his way to a job at like Mississippi State or Arkansas. And that would be horrible Horrible for everybody involved. Don't do it. Keep his ass in the Sun Belt where he belongs. Now speaking, I mean, Arkansas. Conference was... USA. Uh, yeah, they're too. They're, they're too. <laughs> Arkansas last week was, I mean, like Texas A&M tried to help them. Yeah. And then every time Arkansas got the ball and it's like, you can go down the field and you can either tie the game or you can take the lead or whatever. Turnover. It felt like a turnover every single time yep. and it feels like it's only a matter of time for Pittman and I do wonder if the Walmart folks Waltons and uh Jerry Jones you know big booster of Arkansas are we thinking he's got a relationship with a coach in Colorado doesn't he no Jerry Jones does no Arkansas could pay more he he wouldn't leave before 
the kids leave before Shadour, Travis Hunter, and Sh- and Shiloh specifically leave. Well, couldn't they transfer with him? They'd have to sit out. Why? They've already used a transfer. Oh, okay. Can yeah. we get a waiver of some sort? If he sits Travis Hunter out for the year, Travis Hunter could be eligible to play immediately. Shadour maybe. could just go to the NFL, even though he said. Couldn't he transfer because be his dad? I mean, yeah, you can do families. Can you do family stuff? I think so. Sure. Okay. I don't know. What's Probably. the NCAA do? Around. What are they going to do? Say no? No, you're suspended. Nah. We're I still play. to this day believe the University of Memphis needs to put up the 2008 banner. Oh, you're board. you're mad at your university for 08. Can we get the Fab Five banners up in, yeah, in no, Chrysler? No, no. Put that stuff back up. Yeah, put it up. What are they going to do? Take that down or, <laughs> el- or else. <laughs> or else what are you going to do? <laughs> This week, there are four ranked battles uh, in college football. Two of them are in the SEC, including the Kentucky Wildcats taking on the Georgia Bulldogs this week. Georgia's a 14.5-point favorite against Kentucky. Both teams are undefeated. Mark Stoops knows that, uh, well, they're stepping into a very tough, difficult place to play. It goes without saying the challenge to go on the road uh, to Athens to play Georgia um, you know, what a great opportunity. You know, for us, it's about us again. You know, we need to go back this week and continue to build, continue to look at the way we've been practicing, the way we've been improving, and uh, look to take another step here this week. So that's the challenge for us. Georgia 1-3 and three against the spread this season, 1-5-1 one, and one against the spread in their last seven games. Of course, they have won all of those games. 0-4-1 oh, and one against the spread, their last five at home. Meanwhile, Kentucky 4-0 and oh against the spread this season. They're 14-5 and five against the number in their last 19. 5-1 against the spread, their last six on the road. Head-to-head, Kentucky has covered four of the last five meetings in the series. The last four meetings have gone under. Pick it or park it, Roser. Uh, I've got it on my picks. Oh. So so we'll hold on to your thoughts about it. But what, just give me your thoughts of the game. The home team, Kentucky won't be able to score. We've seen this game before. Kentucky, their last two trips to Sanford Stadium, they scored 13 points, like, total. Yeah. I, I, I mean. Not concerned with I, how I, Georgia's I, looked in these first four. No, and I'm not concerned with uh, – because Kentucky, Kentucky runs the ball. Like, they're going to try to run the ball and run the ball and run the ball and run the ball and run the ball. And, like, guess who has better players than Kentucky at running the ball? Georgia. <laughs> so, we've seen this before. Georgia probably wins the game 24-3. to <laughs> and it seems about right. 24-3, to three, Georgia. And, and in control. I'll probably I'm with tell you to take the under also. I, I'm with you. I don't have a pick on it, but if I was to pick it, I would go Georgia and I would take the under. I feel confident and taking the under for everything that Roser just laid out there. Kentucky, the way they beat Florida, left me wondering how the hell Tennessee lost to Florida, Mm -hmm. one. And two, wondering, uh, can Kentucky do this to anybody else? I'm not sure, with the exception, no, not even South Carolina. I don't think Kentucky can just pound the ball down your throat. We knew what they were going to do every single time they lined up, and not only did they do it, they dominated while doing it. Georgia, to Roser's point, much better athletes. They're built to stop the run, although that defense has taken a step back. When you think about Georgia uh, the past two years, beating SEC opponents by an average of 17 points per game, uh, and then beating this year South Carolina and Auburn by 17 points combined, that defense has taken a step back from elite once-in-a-generation type of defense to pretty good collegiate football defense is still going to be good enough to be in control against uh, Kentucky. Uh, Georgia, they might not crack 30, but Kentucky might not score at all. Georgia will cover that, and I think the under is the the play as well. What's the under? Uh, Uh, 48 and a half. Yeah. I... um... I am going to pick it, of course, and I. But I don't like it. I, I'm. I'm. I take. I am taking Kentucky uh, plus the fourteen and a half. I think Kentucky's good. I and I and I think Georgia's bored now. Now the problem is, I think Georgia may come out of that boredom this week because they're actually playing a ranked team that is undefeated. Um, so there might be a little motivation for the Bulldogs this week. But I think other than that, they've just been going through the motions and just they're, they're not covering. They haven't covered a game yet this year, despite the lines being down. I mean, 14 and a half last week against Auburn seemed 
too easy, and it wasn't. Uh, and 14 and a half seems easy against Kentucky. I think Kentucky's much better than Auburn. Uh, I know that one was on the road, but I think I think Kentucky's a good team, and I think they'll be able to run the ball. I mean, Ray Davis has been he's been a beast, and and he was unbelievable against Florida Gators. I think they'll be, have success doing that, and I think Stoops is a hell of a coach. Georgia will win, but Kentucky will cover. But the un, the under seems to be the real play. Well, yeah, because here we go. The last four times these teams have played, these are the uh, total points scored in the game. 22, 43, 17, 21. And it's 48 and a half. Now, if you go prior to those four years, the two years before that, so that'd be 22, 21, 20, 19. If you go 18 and 17, they both hit over 48 and a half in those games. But that's before Kirby really got himself going. Uh, the squad was the squad. Everything's, uh, and Mark Stoops really got everything going now. And so... You know the identity of both of these teams. Um, and the identity for both is going under. I think the safe bet is probably to just take the under and stay away from the total. But I would say the 14 and a half is – I'd buy the hook with Georgia at 14. If you're going to take Georgia, I would not play the other half because, I mean, it could be 21 to nothing and Kentucky scores a late touchdown. Like, I, I don't know. Kentucky might be really good. We'll see. I don't know. I see Kentucky, like you said, they start 5-0, and 6-0 and every year, and then they just... 5-0 and or 4-1. and one. Yeah, every year. It's yeah, that and, way with Kentucky. And then something happens, and well, they, 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 get the the conference play. they get into the meat of the conference play, yeah. and they start dropping games. We start talking about how awesome Will Levis is, and then oh, we gosh, realize Will Levis is just mid as hell. And mm hmm you know, he can't even beat up Malik Willis for the backup job at the Titans. And so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other ranked but battle. But he can lift weights. Did you know that? I did. I Great found, at yeah, lifting I weights. It. The other ranked battle in the SEC, number 23, LSU, taking on number 21, Missouri. Uh, Missouri undefeated at this point. So is LSU. LSU comes in as a six and a half point road favorite. With the total at 63 and a half between these two teams. Uh, CJ got me interested in this one yeah. yesterday on the Chris Vernon show when he came in and was given, he'd taken Jessica's place for the five college games to watch this weekend. And he mentioned this one, and it was not on my radar at all. But uh, I mean, it's, if, if you tell me LSU still can't tackle, I would just take the over. <laughs> you know, like right. Twelve of their last thirteen have gone over. I feel like Missouri's going to be fired up with this one. I we'll see how LSU responds because that you know they lost week one to Florida State, but then the next week they played like a you know a gimme game. I can't remember who they played, but it was McNee State or Grambling or or uh, Southern Utah or I mean I don't know. They played some school that. You, it was the home opener, and that they're going to have their way with them and be able to score. They scored like 70 or 77 or something. Um, so that's not really much there. But they're coming off a loss now in conference, and they've got to go back on the road and play another team who's also ranked in the top 25, who's looked better than people thought they would, who already has a win over a ranked Kansas State team. Um, this is going to say – this is a challenge for Brian Kelly right here in his second season. This is a challenge. How does the team respond? Pick it. Take the over and root for points. <laughs> <laughs> CJ? I take Mizzou because I, LSU can't stop the run and LSU can't tackle. This five, this will be what, game five, game six for them. And this is what you are at this point in the season. Yep. You've struggled all year long against like teams, against Florida State, when they decided, yo, damn this, we're just going to pit the ball in our running back's hand, get a fullback, and run at them until they stop it. And against Ole Miss, they could not stop the runs. I don't care what they did against McNeese State. I think that was the team they played. I don't. Yeah. That's not of interest to me. Like on like, what do you do? And I don't think they can stop the run, which then means you have Cook, who is emerging as a really good quarterback in, in the SEC and a lot of different folks' minds, mine included, where, all right, y'all can't stop the run. Get ready for this play action. We're going to suck y'all up, and then I'm going to hit Burton because that dude is a hoss. It's a lot of great receivers in this matchup for both sides. I look forward to seeing it play out. I would take Missouri uh, and, uh, plus the points. Um, I, it was Grambling State, 72-10. to 10. That's who they beat, Grambling State. <laughs> 
LSU is 13. I, I've been saying it's a bunch of different teams, so I was like, I'm finally just going to look this up and see who it was that they beat that second week. 13 and 6 against the spread for LSU following a loss. Uh, LSU, seven of their last eight against the SEC East have gone over. 12 of their last 13 overall have gone over. Mizzou, seven of their last nine have gone over, including three of their four that they've played this season. Um, Mizzou 14 and 20 against the spread in the last 34 against SEC opponents. I, I think Mizzou has been good when they've played similar opponents this year, like on like, like you were talking about, CJ, where Ole Miss, or LSU has struggled against teams that are similar to them. I think this is a step up for Mizzou this week. And I think it's a huge mismatch in coaching. So I love LSU this week, minus the six and a half. I don't think it's near enough. I, I think LSU goes in and whoops Mizzou it might this be week. A, it might be a big difference in talent on the field. And LSU is just, yeah, it might be. I, I'm not going to touch it. But, yeah. LSU's de- – that's why I'd say just take the over root for points because, like, LSU's defense just freaks me out. Like, what if Daniels does have a bad game at quarterback or an off game? Like, yeah. And Cook, and Bur- you mentioned anybody. Burden. Burden might be the best wide receiver in the league, yeah. um, which is crazy uh, to think. But he, he's in the conversation, at least. Um, and Cook's been Cook's been good. He's been good hurt, <laughs> actually. So, yeah. you know, they, they this, might be able to score some points on this LSU. This game will feature three of the top receivers in the nation. When you think about neighbors yeah. and what's, what's my man's name with the three touchdowns oh. uh, last week against Ole Miss. Oh, you got neighbors who I think is third in the nation, second in the SEC, third in the nation in uh, receiving yards per game. You got Burton who leads the nation in the SEC and receiving receiving yards per game. Thomas, Thomas Jr. Yeah, he had uh, he is near the top of the nation in uh, touchdowns. He leads the SEC if I'm not mistaken in receiving yeah. touchdowns. Brian Thomas. Jr. Uh, there we go. Three touchdowns last week like that. This is going to be a fun game to watch from a receiver standpoint and to see what these defenses do to try and stop these really explosive playmakers on the outside. Dude, he's got eight touchdowns this year. (laughs) Wow. He has 33 catches, 537 yards, and eight touchdowns. He had seven touchdowns his whole career at LSU. He's got eight this year. It's pretty impressive. That's a good start to the season, I would yeah, say. Pretty good. Uh, a couple of other uh, out-of-conference, out-of-SEC top 25 battles. You have number 12, Oklahoma, number 3, Texas. It's the Red River Shootout. Rivalry. Rivalry. Texas, six-and-a-half-point favorite against Oklahoma. The total in that one is 60-and-a-half. Oklahoma has covered their last six games. Texas, however, is, how about this, eight-and-three against the spread, the last 11 against Oklahoma. Interested? Very much so. It's Very one of the biggest so. rivalries it, in college. Park it. Yeah, I, I would. I got a pick on it. I have a pick on uh, it too. But I, I will say this about the game: Texas, I think, is a little bit of smoke and mirrors. First off, these are two of the best. I think the two best defenses from a statistical standpoint in the Big Twelve. They are really stingy defenses to this point in the season. But Texas hasn't played a whole lot of starting quarterbacks. They played Jalen Miro. That win at Alabama is impressive. And then they played three backup quarterbacks en route to looking as dominant as they've looked defensively most recently against Kansas when Daniels didn't play. It bleaked me on my picks. I would not have taken Kansas had I known Daniels had any sort of issue with his back. I sit down to watch that damn game, Rob, and it's like, where, where's Daniels? What happened? He played, but he did like, he play? He played. He got knocked out early. Is that what happened? Because I sat down like three minutes in, and he wasn't there at all. So he played and got knocked out early. Yeah. By well, the way, it goes. If, if Daniels, no, he didn't play. No, no he, he did. Yeah, I no, didn't no, think he, he played. It was Bean. Yeah. Like what? What is going on here? So Texas may very well be a really good defense, but you're talking about a team and a defense that looks dominant against three backup quarterbacks and a Alabama J. Lamiro that's still trying to figure itself out. Gabriel looks to be a dude. This is a, a game with, with a couple of big-time quarterbacks in yours and, and Gabriel, both of them near the top of the nation and certainly at the top of the Big 12 when you think about all the major passing categories. This could be a very, very bad game for that Texas defense because they haven't played an offense like this with a competent uh, quarterback. Also, I I still go to Sarkeesian 
Oak, like Texas has not looked outside. Everybody thinks Texas looks – they're living off the Alabama win because, like, their other wins, they have not been that impressive. Mm-hmm. Like, they they put they finally outscored Wyoming, like, 21 to nothing in the fourth quarter to put that game away, but it was a close game for a while. Uh, even the Kansas game was close for a little bit until the second half, you know, and eventually Kansas is that Bean kid. That Dan, that's such a massive drop-off for Kansas from Daniels to, to Jason Bean. Um, Didn't he play for the hustle? But he, that was Justin Bean. Oh. Justin Bean. Yeah, but Sarkeesian said even after that Alabama game, he coached that game different. Mm-hmm. He coached it different. So which one are we going to get? Are you going to be the guy who goes for it all the time? Are you going to be the guy who's going to come out and throw on first down and be aggressive like you were in the Alabama game? Because you admitted you coached that game different. Which, to me, I would be like, oh, my God, this is what we look like. When I do coach the game different and more aggressive, maybe I should do this more often. But instead, you're going to revert back to the old ways. I also think Oklahoma's sneaky. They haven't played anybody awesome. We either. haven't heard anything they about Oklahoma. Played, but they did. They beat Cincinnati. They beat, they beat Cincinnati, um, which is fine. Um, is it? It's fine. That's what I said. It's I, fine. I'm still counting the Cincinnati's, the, the BYU's, the Central Florida's, the Houston's. Of the world. Expansion as, teams? I'm, I'm counting them as group of five <laughs> yeah. teams. I'm not even considering them like power five teams. It's, it's fine. They're, they're fine. But, no, we're going to find out a lot about these teams. But Oklahoma, they sneaky have been like, they weren't doing this last year. But, like, they're beating the crap out of these teams. Like, yeah. They're killing them. Um, so, yeah, I've got to pick on it. All right, we'll hear that a little later. Also, uh, the other one, Notre Dame, number ten at number twenty-five, Louisville. I got. I love Notre Dame and Louisville. I got to pick on this one. I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about this. I. I mean, I haven't seen Louisville play this year, so I really can't say anything about them. Um, Notre Dame. I probably want to tell you to take the under just because Notre Dame seems to play some low-scoring games yeah. recently. So I'd probably lean towards the under. Uh, yeah. Louisville has covered their last seven games at home. Notre Dame 5-1-1 one, and one against the spread in their last seven games. CJ, pick it, park it. I, I will park it only because oh. it would mean I'd have to pick Notre Dame because <laughs> I don't think, speaking of smoke and mirrors, I'd – talk about what I learned, same shit, different year in college football. No clue what Louisville is. No clue yeah, to this point know. what they are. I don't know what their their best win would be, I guess, North Carolina State. But North Carolina State is a team that just benched their quarterback in, in they Armstrong. They, they beat Louisville, beat Georgia Tech. I think barely they, they drug Georgia Tech, I do believe. Um, and that's kind of it to this point of, of the year. Notre Dame, we've seen them uh, play some much better competition in Ohio State and in Duke uh, as well, and they they didn't look horrible. Right. To, so I think Notre Dame would have the athletes to just be able to keep Louisville in check and take care of business. What's the line on that again? Six. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to pick it. Because I'd have to pick Notre Dame, and I wish the Irish nothing but bad things, Rob. (laughs) We'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll look. uh, We'll rank the top three teams in the SEC. That's always a fun exercise. Uh, Then we'll look at the other SEC action, and then we'll get into the National Football League. Uh, Some buys this week in the Shield. So uh, a couple fewer, uh, a couple fewer games uh, this week on the schedule. That's all right. Still plenty to bet on, and we'll tell you about them when we return here on the Odds Couple on Grind City Media. Stevie Nicks. One special night. Saturday, October 28th, live at FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Stevie Nicks. Live at FedEx Forum. I don't think I've ever had to count calories in my life. And oh my God, it's squeegee day! I don't know if I can continue a show. Like instead of paying for therapy, I think I could just sit and watch a window be squeegeed and like repeat a mantra to myself and I might be cured. It it is very zen. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. 
most anticipated rock holiday tradition returns. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. December 14th, FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. A legendary blend of rock, classical, and holiday music for the entire family. Don't miss Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. Most famous people from Tennessee. And by from Tennessee, what we mean is born in Tennessee. Born in Tennessee. So Taylor Swift out. Dolly has got to be in the top five. Dolly Parton came in at number three. Is Justin on the list? Justin Timberlake. Right at the top of it. Yep. Number two on the list. Born right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Glow. <laughs> Glorilla? The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Welcome back to The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. Secure your seats, Grizz Nation. Let's get back to the grind for the biggest games at the best prices against teams like the Lakers, Warriors, and Nuggets with all new ticket packs. Choose from big game, weekend, tournament, or create your own 10-game flex pack. Get your tickets now by calling 901-888-HOOP or visiting grizzlies.com. The first Grizzlies preseason game is Sunday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, baby. Yep. Sunday night. That's why I'm getting a haircut today. It's haircut time. Oh, it's oh, haircut season. Oh, eggs Benny's in town. Mm-hmm. We'll you know who in. I'm talking about. No, man. I don't. Benedict Matherin. That's what I thought you uh, might Eggs be talking Benny. about. Eggs Benny. Eggs Benny. I yeah. like him. Yeah. A lot. He's kid, good. Kid plays hard. Yeah. And he can freaking score, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's good. Uh, yeah, the Pacers coming. And um, 7 o'clock. Pacers and Grizzlies on Sunday night. You can check it. If, if you're not at FedEx Forum, check it out on Valley Sports. Uh, you can watch the game on Valley Sports, and uh, it'll be our first television you broadcast. Sidelines? Yeah, I'll be on the sidelines for it. So looking forward to it as the I season. We'll not be watching fish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? Is You'll it? be here? A little bit more of an important football game. Come on, Sunday Roser. Night. Oh, yeah. I guess there is a game at that time. Um, that's I, Sunday you know, night I, I, that is no, important. I'm probably, uh, I'm, I may come by for a little bit. Dude. What I'll probably do Sip is. Sip in the suite and watch, it on TV, watch the football game on TV. I probably need to be by myself during that game. I'm all, I like I like being by myself during all 49ers games. Yeah. Like I just don't want to really be. A, I've been around people before. I'm I'm obnoxious. I'm actually I haven't been bad this year during games. Like I've well, because they haven't lost. No, but I've also had a different like. I came into this season with a different perspective about it. Like I'm not gonna let this stuff stress me out. There like you it's go. not fun to be stressed out about it. Um, so for me, it's been it's. To stay healthy, it's about the playoffs. Like, That's right. As long as we stay healthy, we're going to be in the playoffs. And at that point, I just hope everybody's playing their best and playing, we're playing as well as we can. Um, and I, I hope we make a trade soon. Well, we'll get to that game in a second. First, uh, top three SEC teams. Top three SEC teams. Roser, who are the top three teams in the SEC? Uh, Georgia. Yeah, it's a good one. You looking for helmets? <laughs> yeah. um, Kentucky and Missouri. Oh my! I, God. Wow. I don't know. Like wow. what? <laughs> Alabama. I. I'll say jo Georgia, Kentucky, and Bama. There. I'll go. Like we have the helmets lined up. Even Georgia, I, Bama, Ole Miss. Ole Miss. I, Ole Miss. That that offense. As long as they can keep running the football, I feel like that's been the the knock my knock on them when watching them pre LSU. Like yo, they can't run the football. This is beginning to look a lot like the one dimensional Lane Kiffin teams of years past. As long as they can continue to run the football, though, I think they're they're pretty Their good. Their offense is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think that offense is pretty. It's top ten nationally. Um, I think that if the interesting thing is, I would be with you, Roser, Missouri, Kentucky. I don't think either of us would say A and M, and A and M's defense is is pretty I, good. I think Bam is going to be in for it this weekend. Do you? Yeah. Mm. By the way, all of the bets are on Alabama. 
Oh, yeah. I so, don't like that. Like, all of them are. I got uh, – I'll, I'll go George Alabama. I'll give Mizzou a shot this week just to uh, – because that will end this week. And after you're wearing they lose shirt. And I'm wearing M-I-Z. my Tiger shirt today. M-I-Z. Z-O-U. All right, some of the SEC action, the other SEC action. Let's go ahead and start with Alabama A&M. Alabama, two and a half, small favorite over A&M. Two and a half points, the total at 49 and a half. Uh, Alabama, three and eight against the spread. Their last 11 on the road. Five of their last seven have gone over. Meanwhile, the last six games, Texas A&M has covered five of their last six. They have covered four of the last two and the last two against the Crimson Tide. Yeah, I like A&M in this game. I would probably take – I'll take the points, but I'd probably take them straight up. Um, it's all about the home field for me. I think this is the uh, – this is uh, Alabama going on the road against a team that has comparable talent. That's So that's – I mean – I'll be rooting for Alabama because I love seeing just, you know, I'm not the biggest Jimbo Fisher fan. Right. But, uh, and I do like Saban. I do like Saban. I find him hilarious and fascinating. Um, so I'll be rooting for Alabama, but I, I think A&M. Pick an A&M. I'd take A&M. All right. You have a pick on this game, CJ, but uh, I do. give me your uh, thoughts. We saw Miami go in there and lay waste to A&M. And I think that's why when we do the the top three yeah. SEC teams, why nobody even mentions A&M in the honorable mention because we can't get that game out of our head. I, I do wonder. Uh, it is no doubt that it is an advantage to play at home. If, yeah. if you're Texas A&M, that, that, third, that what, a 12th man vibe gets going, and it's, it's a lot of pressure. And don't forget A&M did knock Alabama off last year as well i feel like alabama may have found some footing though and that may be a problem for opponents in the sec west going forward they might have they might have found they might they might have found some footing they did they they, they they might have um they look better they've looked better the last and, couple. i mean they, they completely shut down Ole miss like yeah. that is like that I don't think we talk about that enough. It, like, it gets more like, man, 24 to 10. That game was boring as hell. Holding Ole Miss, I don't care if Alabama was in such schools. Holding that Ole Miss team to 10 points is insane. Again, yeah. that's a top 10 offense statistically in yeah. a yards per game basis in, in the nation. And also, I feel like there were, we know, not I feel like, we know there were questions about who's going to be quarterback for Alabama. Yeah. That's been laid to rest. So those questions that were out there, I feel like some of that may have bled into the team and may have been, I, I hate the distraction word, but it may have been one right. where it is, okay, which one of these dudes, this is my guy, this is my guy, this is who I want, and now it's clear, oh, Milrow gives us the best chance, this is what we're rolling with, let's go out there and do that. And when you have that sort of um, support from the team, that does allow you to play a bit freer if you're Milrow and play with a bit more confidence if, yeah. if you're him. Now, I don't know how much confidence it will help with that arm and decision-making, but it, it certainly will help a little bit. He could throw the deep ball. It is all the, the intermediate intermediate stuff that he can't do, but he can throw the ball deep, man. That kid's got an arm on him. Yeah. And he, throw, he has thrown some good deep passes this season. Like, he's hit a couple of guys, man. Um, I like Milrow. I think it does need to be like you drop back, one, two, three, run. If it ain't there, you run. Like, you roll out and you start running because the kid can make plays with his legs, too. That touchdown run last week was awesome. Yeah. Um, I'll be rooting for Bam. I, yeah, I would probably take A&M, though. Yeah, I'm taking A&M uh, this week. It, although, it, I, 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 I go into it feeling like, all right, I'm going to get burned again yeah. <laughs> by, <laughs> by Alabama. They're going to burn me here. But, and, yeah, you don't trust A&M either, for that matter. But uh, I think Bama, th- this is an interesting game for Bama. I think this is a game, if Alabama wins this game, it, it, it makes our rankings of the SEC much easier. We're not questioning who's two. I think Bama can solidify that they're the best team in the West with a win this week at Texas A&M. I mean, with what we've seen from LSU so far, uh, with them going on the road and doing what they did to Ole Miss, they win this game at A&M. They're, th- th- they have the West, yeah. and it's 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 theirs. So I think this is big for Alabama. But I would I'm gonna take A&M, although don't feel great We're about not it. Sh- I, just I, a little, just a little play, little play. Like, like, I think we have both said when we've said I'm going to take A and M. We're we're like kind of shivering when we're saying <laughs> it. Like we're not, we're not. Exa- 
you know what? I take I'm taking Alabama. I'm just going to, because I can say I'm taking Alabama. Fine, me too, Roser. Because this is why. <laughs> no, no, no. This is the Alabama thing. Because when you bet against Alabama and they don't, and Alabama, like, you know, covers, wins. You feel like you an idiot. You feel like an idiot. Yeah. Absolutely do. Because that defense is awesome. Texas A&M may not score. And then we'll feel like an idiot. And then we'll feel like idiots. But we won't we're going because Alabama. we're going Alabama now. We're taking Alabama, Alabama now. Yeah, we're going Alabama now. <laughs> uh, Mississippi State and Western Michigan. Any uh, any interest? No. No? Mississippi <laughs> State's favored by 20 and a half over Western Michigan. I wonder what the rest of the, the, the schedule looks like for Mississippi State. I'll look that up. It's not this, good. This might be their last win of the year. Yes. If, if this is their last out-of-conference game. I don't know what they play before the Egg Bowl. They usually play... Um, uh, easy out of conference game before that, but I'll look into that because if this is, if this is it, this is it for the yeah. Bulldogs as far as wins go this season. Yeah, Florida eighteen point favorite against Vanderbilt. Don't care. Don't care, CJ. I mean, look, if Billy, here's why. I, okay, I do care if Vanderbilt beats them. By the way, Van, what you said, Florida's eighteen point favorite. Yeah, Vanderbilt undefeated. It's six and zero ATS this year, five and zero ATS, whatever it is, four and zero ATS. How many games are they? Vanderbilt. Play? Yeah, how many games? They're zero and four. So they're four, but they're but they're spread every time, or the over. No, the over. over. Is yes, 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 the yes. Over yes. is hit every time. The over has hit in every Vandy game. So uh, play the total. I'd probably take the over. Um, where's the game? In Gainesville. Oh, okay. Well, Florida should win. If Vanderbilt wins this game, Billy Napier's done. He's done. Vanderbilt will cover this game, plus the 18. Woo! That's Sheesh! going to happen. Yeah. And because okay. Florida's no good. I mean, that, that's the problem. Florida, they're not, they're not one good. and three against the spread this season, one and five against the spread their last six. Uh, the road team's covered nine of the last 15 uh, between these two. That's too many points. Vanderbilt's you know, actually been competitive. Uh, that I, I think they'll be against a bad Florida. This is yeah. a bad Florida team. It bad. Is. So I had like some friends actually that like, dude, when they were watching the uh, the Florida game last week and Kentucky's killed them, they're like, how did Florida beat the crap out of Tennessee like that? And then they just look like this. And I said, uh, because the game was in Gainesville. And I don't know if you know this, but Tennessee never freaking wins in Gainesville. So yeah. like, you have to just take that win and throw it out. Like Tennessee just. They don't win there. Yeah. And not not a lot of teams win there. Florida is a bad football team, let's be clear. They're not a very good football team. But it's tough team. to go down there and play. They are completely different at home. They're yeah. one in thirteen, their last fourteen on the road. So when you think about all the losses that Florida has had in the past two or three seasons, they're all coming all on, on the, the road. road. They're all on the at road. At home, they're they're a different Gators team. They're a Gators team that oh, is more reminiscent. Beat Vanderbilt. They ain't gonna cover though. Okay. Yeah. I, I will take that game and I will go the other way. Because Woo, they're at home. Fight. They're fight. <laughs> fight. All right, one more game. Uh, Fighting. Uh, Ole Miss eleven and a half against Arkansas. That seems like a lot considering I Arkansas has covered I, nine of the last I, ten meetings. It's wondered if Arkansas is going to fall apart here. Or maybe Ole Miss found their stride. That's an emotional win. Um, I would take Arkansas just based off the history of the game. Yep. Like, it seems like the game's always close. Yep. I would take – what's the total? Total is 62 and a half. Oh, take the over, root for points. Yeah. Take the over, root for points. We've had some high-scoring games. We've had some awesome Ole Miss-Arkansas games over the year. Oh, I hope we yeah. Get I hope we get a great one, too. hope we get a great I one. I expect another one. I got Ole Miss winning 34-31. There we go! Yeah. So a three-point game, Arkansas, taking Arkansas for sure. They've been so close these last two weeks. They had a chance against LSU. They had chances against A&M. Yeah, what you got, Ar Sam CJ? Pittman. You want to go Ole Miss or something? Yeah, I absolutely want to go Ole Miss. I don't like this Arkansas team at all. They're so bad, specifically in the secondary. They're not very They're not very good. What's their win? Do they have an FBS win on the season? Did they beat BYU? They beat they did. Kent State. They beat Kent State. Okay. So that's that's one. So they got one of those on the on the year. Damn. Now you're I making guess, me want to take Ole Miss. That's like, wild to me. That this, the history this of the Arkansas, game. But that the history is there. The history was there. I thought in the Texas A&M game also, yeah. where it's always close. But while it was close for a little bit, 
A&M was in control of that game. A&M won by 12 or 13 Yeah, well, that's points. the thing. Like, Arkansas had a chance, and they just screwed themselves. They, right. kept, they kept turning the ball over. They like, lost, they had their chance. Lost by seven to BYU, lost by three to LSU, lost by 12 to A&M. They're not losing by 11 in this matchup. It's 11, it's 11 and a half, too, by the hook up to 12. They haven't lost by more than 12 this year. There, there you, you go. go. There you go. So, Four you'd eight. be literally asking something to happen that's never happened to them this year. That's, that's right. lose by more than 12. <laughs> NFL Week 5 starts tonight. I love the NFL and Week 5. Chicago Bears and the Washington Commanders. Don't care. Bears are the worst team in football. They've lost 14 straight games. Washington's 12-3 and three against the spread. Their last 15 against the Bears. Yeah, I, uh, I would – this is just solely because it's like, look, the Commanders are the better team. The Commanders are at home in that crappy stadium. Um, I love FedEx. But that stadium is <laughs> that stadium is known as like it needs massive, massive upgrades to it, um, which hopefully they get or they get a new stadium. Um, but I'm not laying six points with the Commanders. Like they're not that good. Like they might cover it, but I'm not going to lay six with them. You I know think what? The Bears people, are that bad. You know, people laid like seven with them opening week against the Cardinals. Guess what? They ain't cover that one. Yeah. Like, and the Cardinals aren't great. The Cardinals play hard, though. That's a feisty team. They're going to win some games this year because of that. But the Bears suck. Like, they really, really suck at football. <laughs> like, talk, we talked about it on uh, the Chris Vernon show yesterday, Rosa. The Bears are, only, are the only team. Elon oh, yeah. bought Twitter in October of last year. Rob, the only team in professional sports, MLS, NHL, NBA, uh, uh, MLB baseball. and NFL, the only one to not have a win post Elon Musk buying Twitter. They haven't won a game. Haven't the Bears? The Bears haven't won a game since Elon Musk. They've bought lost Twitter. like fourteen games in a row or something. It's, it's horrible. Crazy. It's terrible. Mm. I'm going to have to watch that tonight because there's no Major League Baseball on tonight. There's no baseball on tonight? No, all the series ended yesterday. They were all 2-0 sweeps? Yeah. Whoa, okay. I don't want to get off topic. I was going to ask you a baseball question. I'll ask you at the break. All right. Uh, Dallas at San Francisco, the game of the week. That is Sunday night football. Kyle Shanahan, he's the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. Here he is talking about his stud, Christian McCaffrey. All, all, all good players out there make their teammates better, but um, my favorite thing about it is, is just how he carries himself, too. That's um, when you're one of the best players in the league, but you carry yourself with the work ethic and the consistency of how important every little detail is, and he's harder on himself um, than anybody is. Um, it makes it fun to coach everyone else, too. Bears are 12-3 and three against the spread their last 15. However, Dallas has won four of the last five at San Francisco. Roser. What do you think about this big one on Sunday? Um, so the 49ers have scored 30 points in, I think, like every game that Brock Purdy has started. We've scored 30 in every game this year, and I think it's something like nine or ten straight games we've scored, whatever, 30. It's, it's something, regular season games that Purdy has, like, not the NFC Championship. That game doesn't count. He was out in the first series. Um, this total would lead you to believe the 49ers are not scoring 30. That total's come down. It was 45 and a half, I believe. Maybe it was 44 and a half, and I just read it wrong. But um, that total would lead you to believe the 49ers are not scoring 30 in this game. I don't think they will either. I think it's going to be much like the last two years. It's going to be low 20s, high teens. Um, I think this is a good test for us, a really good test for our team. I don't really like our defense right yet. Our defense has not been that good. Um, they clamped down in the second half against the Rams. They were good. Pittsburgh was whatever. We put the game away early second half. We were not great against the Cardinals. We gave up a 99-yard drive. We let Josh Dobbs make plays. Um, but in the first half against the Rams, we were terrible. And what the Rams did is what the Cowboys have done a lot. It's like short throws, short passes. So Fred Warner's got to control the middle of the field. They have to get the deck. They have to get to him. Like, it sounds basic and simple, but it really is whichever line is going to. The Cowboys' defense has passed the eye test more than the 49ers' defense has this year. Um, but the 49ers' offense has been better than the Cowboys' offense. 
I do think this game means more to Dallas, way more to Dallas. Uh, you can hear it in the quotes from both sides that it means more to Dallas. Um, Michael Irvin this morning said, on a scale of 1 to 10, how big is this game for the Cowboys? He said it's a 14. It's a 14. Oh, jeez. It's a 14. Jerry Jones said the 49ers are the favorites for the, to, to come out of the NFC. This game will tell us where we are. Like That's what this is. We need to find out where we are. Mike McCarthy, their head coach, has said this is not a regular season game for us. So that tells you how, they're, how Dallas is approaching this. Because the 49ers have ended their season the last two years, so it has to be we have to show we, we've been close. We've been, it's not like they've been blowouts both games. Like They've been close games. But we have to show we can get over the hump against them. Um, that being said, I have zero play on this game. Oh, CJ, pick it. Park it. Um, I'm a park it just because what? I want to. I want to. I thought you picked. I know it. I want to enjoy this though. Yeah. I just want to enjoy this as no a football fan this. because it's going to be great. That 49ers offense is explosive in a way and multiple in a way that I not since the greatest show on turf. I think. Not since Kurt Warner and them were running around. I don't feel like I've seen an offense like this. I've seen great offenses, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, but those were quarterback-led offenses because those dudes were just special. I haven't seen this many really, really good skill position players on one side of the ball in a long, long time. So you got that offense going up against that Cowboys defense, with Rose, which Roser is right. They have passed the eye test. They do look like one of, if not the most dominant defensive team in the NFL right now. You got that going on. It's going to be a great game. If I had to pick it, I would take uh, the Cowboys plus the three and a half um, just because I think it is a one or two score game. Somebody's driving down the field late. The score is, I don't know, 21 to 18, and then a, a field goal gives you the 21, and you end up winning by one. If, so I would take the Cowboys plus the, the three and a half. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, if you go in the last two games that they've played, the playoff games, Dak's thrown three interceptions total, and I think Jimmy and Brock threw zero. Brock didn't throw any, I know. But Brock hadn't thrown an interception at all this year, which that also freaks me out. Because, like, eventually <laughs> you're just, eventually you're just going to do it. Right. Like, it's going to happen, you know. And that's why I'm also, like, losing games. Like, bro, eventually you're going to lose a game. Like, it's just going to happen. He hasn't lost the start. Like, McCaffrey has a touchdown in, like, 14 straight games or something. Or, it's He's so freaking good. But I also worried we're going to run him into the ground. I do wonder if they take a page out of what the Cardinals did and how you approach playing against Micah Parsons and that you run at him. You try to overpower that defensive line. The pass rush is awesome, but can you run on them? And if you can run on them, you run right at Parsons. Because if you try to go sideline to sideline, he's getting off the block. He's way too fast. You saw the, Car the Cardinals ran for over 200 yards against Dallas. Now, that could be Dallas just... They took them lightly. They didn't. They didn't take them. They didn't take them serious, and so. And I tend to think Dallas just didn't take Arizona serious, even though like. And they are one of those teams this year. Arizona's going to be. If you don't take them serious, like they can beat you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it should be uh, should be an entertaining game. I do. I think it. Just this is solely based from the comments that I've heard coming out of Dallas this week, whether it's Jerry Jones, whether it's Mike McCarthy, whether it's Michael Irvin, this game means more to Dallas right now. Like, they feel like they have to show they can beat San Francisco. All right, we'll take a break uh, here on The Odds Couple. When we come back, we will have some fish nuggets. No! And then we'll have free picks Yay! for the weekend, including Lang's picks. Uh, that's all coming your way here on The Odds Couple on Grind City Media. On Saturday, October 21st, AEW is on the road to full gear. You gotta be kidding me! Oh! Will you be there live when AEW Collision makes its debut at the FedEx Forum? I wanna pick a fight, and you will give me what I want! Saturday night's all right for fighting. The best professional wrestling company in the entire world! And you never know who might just show up. What a moment! Don't miss AEW Collision for the first time ever at the FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at AEWTix.com. Cards subject to change. I thought maybe we should go around and talk about some G League alum that are playing in the NBA. And because we like the number five, we're going to do top five. I think the clear winner here is Pascal Siakam. Do right? you? You think that's the clear winner? I mean, he was a, he won a title in the G League. I think he was the MVP, right? For playing for the mm -hmm. Toronto 905. What are mm -hmm. they called? 
901. 905. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. The most anticipated rock holiday tradition returns. Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. December 14th, FedEx Forum. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. A legendary blend of rock, classical, and holiday music for the entire family. Don't miss Trans-Siberian Orchestra, live in concert. The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. The first one we have here is this Cactus Plant Flea Market, nice. Nike Flea 2 Faded Spruce. Shoot. I like these. I don't know. It's just some about them. I just like. They're not. That looks mm -hmm. good. Okay, Sherm, I don't know. Sherm, 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 Sherm. Okay. So. Just walk me through. Patches. Sherm style. Like, st what would you wear with these? <laughs> Sherm style. So, I would definitely get, get some minimal LA fur pants with this. Mm -hmm. And just give me a little nice little oversized t-shirt. The Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Welcome back to The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Here's Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker. AEW Collision is making its action-packed debut at FedEx Forum Saturday, October 21st. Purchase tickets at Ticketmaster.com, FedEx Forum box office, or for more information, visit FedExForum.com. Look at that stinky face on that one fella right there in the front. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to The Odds Couple. It is Chapter 5, Week 6, and before we give you our picks for the week, it is time for some fish nuggets. Yep, we got some nuggets. Got some good ones. Uh, LSU, 10-2 and two against the spread after allowing 40 or more points the previous week. Oh, they so are minus bounce, six and a half at Mizzou. So bounce back season. Bounce back season. Florida Gators. They are three and 18 against the spread in their last 21 games as a favorite. That's not good. Three and 18 against the spread as a favorite. And they're an 18 point favorite against Vanderbilt. Another reason to love Vandy this yeah. week. Georgia. In 31 of their last 35 wins at home, they've won by 14 or more points. They are a 14 and a half point favorite against Kentucky. So when Georgia wins at home, it's usually by 14 the or more. The last time they played Kentucky at home, though, they only won by 10. Hmm. Yeah. Alabama, meanwhile, 3 and 14 against the spread in their last 17 games played in week six. <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. Three, three, three and 14 That's against the spread in week six. <laughs> They're minus two and a half at AM. AM, meanwhile, five and one against yeah, the spread. Their last good. six in week six. That so, burnt. That's a good Woo! week six. Uh, the New York football giants are the only prime, only team to play three primetime games so far this season. Why? They're 0 and 3, and they've been outscored 94 to 15 it's in those games. TV. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go. Uh, we need to start. What's that petition website where everybody petition.org? Si petition we need to do a petition. Everybody sign it for the NFL. Like, can we please not watch the Giants or the Jets? Or the and, Bears. Well, the Bears, like, I I don't think we're going to see them many more times. I after hope this. Not. But, like, it feels like Sunday and Monday night I have seen the freaking Giants and the Jets. Every. Time. Every damn time. Like, can we, like, petition, can you please get their sorry asses off my television? Unless Taylor Swift is there, are you going to do the Andy Rooms thing? I don't want to see them on my screen. Yeah, like, just. And make them Toy Story characters or get them the hell out of here. Get, give me the Toy <laughs> Look, I was loving the Toy Story broadcast. Yeah, I was loving it. It just kept screwing up. So I had to go to the regular broadcast. Uh. It kept buffering and doing all that. I was like, I, uh, like, I want to watch this. But, like, I loved it when I got to see. When it wasn't buffering. I <laughs> hate buffering. I'm petitioning buffering. <laughs> By the way, Giants quarterback Daniel Jones in primetime games, 1 and 11 as a starter. 1 and 11 as a starter. That's amazing. Too much, like 160 million. Uh, Rosier. Go, good for you, man. Good for you. Good on you, Daniel Jones. You were really close here, Roser. Uh, Christian McCaffrey uh, has oh, yeah. now scored a touchdown in 13 straight games, oh, including wow. the playoffs, breaking a tie with Jerry Rice for the longest streak in 49ers franchise and history. McCaffrey for a touchdown would be a good bet. And I bet he's probably gone over. Um, 
a hundred scrimmage yards. Yeah. In all of those two, I do wonder. Uh, Debo and George Kittle had a combined one catch last week against Arizona. Mm-hmm. Do wonder if you may see them more involved on Sunday. Also, how about this one? There's a little info for you. Uh, Brock Purdy, when he targets Brandon Ayuk this year, Ayuk's like our downfield guy. Uh, Brock Purdy has a perfect passer rating for oh. hitting Ayuk. 158.3. 17 of 20 throwing to Ayuk. Wow. That's pretty yeah. impressive. You got weapons. All right, pick time. The hey! picks! I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I am going with the Colorado Buffaloes, minus the four Buffalo! at Arizona State. Arizona State is 1-14 straight up as a dog. And it's only four. I'll take it. Colorado's 27-6 and six straight up as a favorite. Uh, I'm taking Arkansas plus the 11 and a half at Mississippi State. Arkansas is covered not, or against Ole Miss, actually. That's uh, Arkansas plus 11 and a half at Ole Miss. Uh, Arkansas has covered nine of the last 10 meetings. I'll go with them. Uh, Notre Dame at six. Notre Dame minus six uh, at Louisville. Uh, Notre Dame, 10. How about this nugget? 10 and 0 against the spread. 10 and 0 against the spread. Their last 10 against ACC opponents. Notre Dame, make it 11 and 0 against ACC opponents. The Commanders minus five and a half against the Bears because Chicago is terrible. Chicago's last 12 games overall, they're 1 10 and 1 against the spread. Yeah, they that is pathetic. Yeah. And then the 49ers, I am taking the 49ers over the Cowboys because the 49ers have been a covering machine. Covered their last nine at home, 15 and two against the spread, their last yeah. 17 you know, at home for Fish, the Niners. You Go have, one thing Niners. you have been, you have been really good in the NFL. So yep, your I NFL been. picks have been awesome. That's true. That is true. Six and one in the NFL. Yep. I hope you're eight and one. Lightning after, uh, six and one so far I in hope, the NFL. I hope you're eight and one next week. Uh, thank you. Do we have uh, do we have Lang's picks? Or if you're seven and two, I hope it's the right game. Yeah, we got we Lang's go. picks. All right. I, I got notes from Lang too. That's How about embarrassing this? right there. Lang's <laughs> Lang's taking Kentucky plus the four against Georgia, which shocks me. Uh, he says, I think Georgia wins, but Auburn ran all over Georgia and Kentucky ran all over Florida. So one, one. I would just say to that, um, weird things happen at Jordan Hare. Yes. Uh, he's taking Mizzou plus the six and a half against LSU. His note is, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe. <laughs> he's going to Alabama minus the two and a half because Bama's defense is quietly getting really good. They've been really good. Purdue, Iowa, the under 38 and a half uh, because he wants to root against points. Well, and the, and the <laughs> Iowa quarterback is out for the year. so And the, he already wasn't good. So imagine what the backup is. And how can the Dolphins not be up a touchdown on the dang Giants by halftime? Minus six and a half first That's half. Fair. That's what Lang's going with. The Giants were terrible in the first half. <laughs> All yeah, right. They've been terrible everywhere. But yeah, yeah. CJ. I like those last three picks from Lang a, a whole lot. The first two, maybe not so much, but I love those last three. All right, what do I got here? Uh, first off, workplace slay. Oh, we didn't uh, even get to my my other NFL, what I learned, but we'll talk about that. Oh, later. yeah. Uh, give me uh, Oklahoma plus the six versus Texas. You're talking about it's a, a it, – We're not shorting ourselves. It's six and a half. It's six and a half. We're getting that hook. Give we're me, getting that hook. I love a hook. Uh, shout out Megan Stallion, Burr. Captain Hook. Um, Gabriel is a much better quarterback than Texas has faced. Now, sure, Texas defense uh, is a top 15 uh, defense when you think about opponents' points per game. Oklahoma's top five. Uh, neither one of these teams, with the exception of Texas playing Alabama, has really been tested by an offense like they will see this weekend. I think Gabriel and I think Venables have more than enough to not just cover that spread but win it. This feels like a three-score game either way to me. So I will take Oklahoma. Hadn't talked about them because regionally, when are we going to talk about Maryland football? Mm. I'll say it. My chest. Conrad Hurd Jr., me. Maryland beats one of Ohio State, Michigan, or Penn State this year. I'm not sure which one they get. They get one of them. They're not going to do it against Ohio State, I don't think. But that 19 and a half feels really, really hot. Maryland is much better than Indiana, and Ohio State only be Indiana by 20. Now, you, you could say that was the start of the year, but Ohio State hasn't looked like no. gangbusters world beaters to me this season. So give me Maryland and the points. Give me Alabama uh, laying the two and a half against AM. AM had not one, but two non offensive touchdowns against Arkansas last week to help swing that game. I don't think that they will. 
uh, do the same thing to Alabama. Alabama's not going to give up a pick six. Alabama's not going to have a special teams touchdown against them. Give me Alabama and the two and a half. I will also, Rob, take the commanders and the five and a half. That front four is as good as anybody else's defensive front in the in the NFL and the Bears, Suck. the offensive line is terrible. The quarterback is bad. They they're in for a long. The Thursday. coach is a big Eberflus. Yeah, he is. He is that as well. And then it's a pick 'em against for Tennessee, Indiana. Uh, Mike Vrabel is, I think, six and two all time against the the Colts, Indianapolis. Excuse me. Uh, Tannehill is five and one against the Colts as as a Titan. That that matchup, that rivalry used to be dominated by the team that had Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck. Well, Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck ain't walking through that door. It's Trenton Richardson, not Trent. It is uh, Anthony Richardson coming through there. I think if it's a pick'em game, or which is basically what the one point implies, I would take the Titans. I feel like they figured out the way to use both Spears and Henry in the backfield in a real good way. Right. Roser. All right, let's do it. I'm going to take Oklahoma plus the six, six and a half against Texas. If it's six and a half, I'll probably buy. Actually, I think I did buy. I think I already did, and I bought it to uh, seven. I bought it to seven. Um, Washington State, a lot of people betting on Washington State this week. That kind of freaks me out, but I also do think they have motivation because uh, college game day has been crapping on them for whatever reason. I don't even know what started this, but uh, – I like the over 59 between Washington State and UCLA this weekend. Cam Ward. Cam Ward is still, like, do not talk about him enough as how good that kid is. He still hasn't thrown an interception this year, I don't think. Um, I got a 40 to 1 bet on him to win the Heisman the other day. I was oh. like, why not? Why not? Uh, Georgia, I'm going to take a minus the 14. I think Georgia wins 24 to 3. Uh, California plus the 10 against Oregon State. I'm going to take that. Look, everybody's hyped up about Oregon State getting the big win, the home win over Utah. That Wilcox guy at Cal, and Cal, on, Cal barely beat Arizona State. It's because Cal was a favorite. This freaking Wilcox guy is unbelievable as an underdog at Cal. He's been a, he's been amazing as an underdog. One another of the best. One, he and Napier. A, two, another one that's also been really good as an underdog, especially a home underdog. Now, he wasn't against the 49ers earlier this year, but Mike Tomlin, division game at home. Steelers played like crap last week, or maybe the Texans are not that bad and Stroud is good. Whoa, certainly looks good. He certainly looks good. That's what I Ohio State quarterback, by the way. Um, the Baltimore Ravens played Dorian Thompson Robinson, Lamar Jackson, eight. This is different, though. Pittsburgh, I'm going to take. You're going to give me four and a half? I'm going to take it because I think it's a field goal game. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, it's a field goal game. I'll take the Steelers plus the four and a half. All right, one more free pick. I got a free pick. Free pick. Oh, free pick. We're taking Liberty tonight, minus the 18 against Sam Houston State. Liberty's been a covering machine. They've covered five straight, yeah. and uh, they will cover the 18 tonight against Sam Houston State. Just I, a little I think so free. Too. Sam Houston State can't score. No, no, no. They're awful. All right, that's going to do it for this week's edition of The Odds Couple. We thank you for joining us uh, here today. Um, good luck with all your bets this weekend. Enjoy all the action this weekend as well. The baseball playoffs get underway. Don't forget to tune in to Infield Fly for... Updated baseball talk on all the baseball playoffs. Myself, Lang Whitaker, and Keith Murphy. And we want to thank Lang Whitaker for his picks today. Thanks to Roser. Also to CJ. I'm Fish. Thank you for joining us. This has been The Odds Couple oh, <laughs> on Grind City Media. You've been listening to The Odds Couple on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Tune in next time with Rob Fisher and Lang Whitaker.